types of felt quilts. One's going to be with borders and one's going to be without borders. This is a felt quilt where you lay on your silk or your cotton or fabric and you create borders using the wool. Um, and another nice way to make a felt quilt and my favorite way to make a felt quilt is not using borders and it's much more fun and to me the results are so much nicer. I just want to see how it turns out. That's what we're gonna do. So you can see and decide for yourself which one you like more. Oops, sorry. Also gonna use my brown because I just have a lot of this fiber. I have chosen some colors from my stash and I kind of picked colors that I thought would be nice together and it wasn't hard. I decided that I wanted some pink and some yellow and I just chose any colors in my stash that were kind of pink and yellow and looked like they matched for the same tone. Like this is a kind of a warm pink, it's not a cold pink. Like I picked up a piece that was a pink but it was a cool pink and all these are kind of warm tones and so that's how I ended up getting these nice uh, cozy warm springy happy colors. also picked up this kind of limey color and this blue and then this is kind of a brown but it has some pinky purple tones in it and it took me a minute to figure out but I decided they looked cool together. This is a silk and this is like a cotton. Ooh, that's tough because this has some red in it and there's some red in here so that's kind of nice. Let's go with this one. So I'm going to make my piece quite small. You can make yours bigger but I'm going to stick with some small samples because eventually I might make some little books. Maybe in a year from now I've improved or <laughs> it just might be nice to look back on. I'm going to use it with some white because for me that's safe. I actually think I would use it with a light yellow. Ooh. I have found some yellow and I'm just thinking like that's quite bright. It would be fun. I'm, I think it would actually look nice. So maybe that, and definitely not that. But this is something more along the lines I was thinking of. A little bit more subtle, so I could go with that. Although I think that would look kind of cool. Huh. So I'm completely exhausted. Stayed up all night learning about YouTube videos and watching other people's videos. Bear with the... <laughs> the exhausted look. We are going to enjoy the bounty of wool that the earth has provided. Looking nice. Mm. <laughs> like soap in my face. Like some days you have those days, right? Some days you just have those days. What happens when you're tired. <laughs> Last night I kind of did think about like, well, am I going to do, am I going to do a felt quilt video today? And I woke up and like rummaged around in my stash and I woke up and like rummaged around in my stash. And can I, can I pick colors this today? Like, but sure enough, like I'm pretty happy with my selection. So here we are. Well, there's two different mindsets when you're making a video. It's I'm making a video or I'm making art. I'm just enjoying making a piece of felt. That'll be more fun. I cut different uh, square shapes, which is really easy to cut out and you can cut out other shapes and it looks really nice too. I'm going to line them up right next to each other. And I'm going to put my shapes right on the edge. And I'm just going to start placing them where I think they'll look nice and sort of have some balance. So maybe one here and one in the middle there kind of looks nice. Yeah, I might do a few of those just to have some yellow in there. So these edges 
on the silk. I usually leave them on depending on what I'm doing. They can look really nice. Time to felt it. I'm gonna add some soap. So some silks may not be completely silk, uh, they will take longer to attach for the fibers to migrate through. I have some nylon on here and it's like um, an open weave sort of fabric and it sticks really easily. Normally what I do is I'll grab a bunch of things I think are natural fibers and I will bring it home and cut it up and put a sample on a piece of felt and then felt the whole thing to see what sticks and what doesn't stick, what looks good, and you'll be surprised. Sometimes the acrylic or polyester fibers do stick quite well and maybe go up shopping and grab just a bunch of things that I think are cotton or silk or natural. So I have a sample here. This is from the op shop, all of these fabrics, and I thought maybe they were silk or they're open weave and they're nice, so I'm going to try it. And sure enough, most of them were either silk or cotton. Be like 5% wool in this blue one because it did stick and it's a bit odd that it stuck down so well. Um, but it's definitely like coming off. So you can totally use it even though it's definitely not wool. And then I used like a super thick piece of cotton and it felted, which is amazing. Flowery one on here and it's really pretty. You could make an awesome felt bag with that. Definitely my favorite one. And it's silk, it's gotta be silk really cool colors That's super nice the other piece here that I made it's like a silk quilt but it's messy it's more organic like I just put different materials all over in different shapes and I didn't really plan it I put some borders around them as well so and there's a little piece of mohair on there and so it's kind of cool um, but I do like like the, the the nice the nice hard edges more than like this organic looking stuff and I'm definitely happy with it so far because I just love pink and yellow and it's already inspired me for a colorway for yarn dyeing. Pink and yellow with maybe some brown speckles on it. Dark contrast areas are quite nice. These really pretty colors. I'm super excited about that. It'd be better if you didn't have wrinkly material. But So basically what you do if you're going to put borders on it is you just take your wool fiber and you make thin pieces along each edge everywhere where you want it to be nice and crisp and then you can get this look like this and so it's a little bit finicky and takes a little bit more time to make pieces of wool and cover all your edges. If you want even finer edges you can buy like a pencil roving like just a very thin yarn that hasn't been twisted it hasn't been spun and that is a nice piece of um that is a nice crisp edge you can use or you can even use yarn it's really not my style so i'm not going to do it i'm not going to do it for this one um and i'm glad i have the sample to show you because i don't really want to do it again even though it looks awesome um for this one i just love these these colors and i just don't want to cover any of it, it might be handy if you're using fiber that doesn't have nice edges or that doesn't stick down as easily and it needs that extra fiber to adhere to the project. So that's how you do that one. I 
I'm pretty happy with them. You really can't do quilting, silk quilting, cotton quilting, um, uno quilting, or making scarves this way with this technique wrong. It's very hard to do it wrong. I think even if you choose terrible colors, it's still going to look quite nice. The only way I can imagine doing it wrong is kind of just choosing the wrong color of base because when the fat fibers blend through, sometimes it can dull down very sheeny silks. So choosing the right colors to make the silk pop. Pick colors that are complementary or pick colors that are similar to one another or pick colors that you just love together. Helps to see like how that's going to look underneath. So the brown, I think that would look nice. It kind of makes it pop in its own way. It really makes this more yellow, so I really like that. Um, and so yeah, just an easy trick for getting the colors right is just laying your silk or your cotton on top or beside it just to check. It was a very easy thing to do. It did take some time to cut out the silk, especially because my silk was all crinkly. When they're dry, they're going to turn out quite a bit brighter and they're going to pop, especially all these silk. And this cotton one here, it had a sheen to it. Maybe you made a piece yourself. And if you did, please comment how it turned out and anything you may have learned or any challenges you ran into or any tips you wanna share. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.